What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards and Comics here for a classic charts and graphs video. Using some market movers today. Link in the description down below. Discount codes. You guys and girls know the drill. It's the eve of the NBA draft, and I wanted to take a little bit of a deep dive and just kind of dig in on a bunch of different NBA players and just kind of seeing how their stuff has gone over the last six months. Uh, going back 180 days of market movers puts us right at Christmas. It's also kind of a nice snapshot for the first half of the year and a general state of kind of where things lay leading into the NBA draft because now we are heading into Woj and Sham Bomb season. When they start dropping all sorts of nonsense out there, trade rumors, trades, free agent signings. We are in what some people is the favorite part of the NBA, NBA Twitter, NBA offseason, NBA draft. A lot of people get more hyped for the next four weeks, three weeks, than they do for the actual season itself. I'm not going to lie. I probably listen to more NBA podcasts this time of year than any other, and I listen to quite a lot. I cannot get enough of NBA offseason stuff. I love the NBA offseason. I'm the guy that buys NBA 2K and doesn't actually play the games and just simulates through seasons over and over and over and over and over and over again. But I digress. Let's go ahead and dive in. Like I said, we are going back 180 days, six months. That puts us right at Christmas Eve, basically. And part of the reason I wanted to do this, get a little bit of a baseline of kind of where things sit. Curious to see if we've hit the bottom on modern NBA spoilers. I don't think we have most cases. Uh, I'm also interested to see if one of these teams does do a big shakeup. Does it kind of spike things from here? So it'll be interesting depending on how the next couple of weeks goes to maybe look at this again in a month uh, and look to see what's moved over the last 30 days. Typically, typically in a normal set of market conditions. This is usually around when things kind of start to level out here. Just past the NBA, uh, right past the NBA draft and free agency, things usually dip a little bit more and then just kind of coast their way on through the summer. Let's go ahead and dive in. Mostly Prism Silver, but obviously for some of these guys, they don't have Prism Silvers. Rookies only. First up, LeBron. Tops Chrome, Bowman Paper, Bowman Chrome, Tops paper, all PSA 10 over the last six months. You could see the charts down, 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 down. And the Tops Chrome is the one that's had the biggest correction. His Tops Chrome base is down 40%, down to 7.9K, 8K for a Tops Chrome base. Uh, and these things just keep on falling. Where the bottom is on this, I legitimately don't know. Pre pandemic, this was about a $2,000 card. I don't think it ever gets back to that point. Uh, but I do think it still has room to potentially go down. That is part of the reason why uh, I traded away my PSA 8 a couple weeks ago. His tops base is down 25%. I've always hated that card. Uh, the Bowman base rookie in stars is actually only down 1%, but there was the last recent sales spiked way up. The one prior to that and a couple prior to that were around 1,300. So that might be an outlier. I'm going to guess that it is just based off of the rest of the LeBron market, but I could be wrong. And then the Bowman Chrome uh, is down 50%. Uh, the Bowman Chrome is actually the sneakier one if you're looking at LeBron stuff, honestly, like base LeBron stuff. It's 3300 bucks in a PSA 10. The pop on this is only 540 Now, the Topps Chrome has way more demand. That stuff matters just because something has a low pop count. Doesn't mean it has high demand, so don't get caught up in that whole game. But... If you are looking for a nice LeBron rookie, look at the Bowman stuff. You could you can you know get something a little bit cheaper. Still a, a pretty nice image. I've always liked the way that the Bowman has looked, especially the Chrome, um, for a much much more reasonable price. But LeBron market down basically forty percent, thirty to forty percent on LeBron base rookies. Moving along, Giannis was moving steady, and you kind of see this like LeBron. His base Chrome has been just straight down the whole last six months. Now, part of that was the Lakers basically sucked all of last year. So that kind of really sucked the wind out of his sails. Giannis, 
Green line is his PSA 10 base prism. Stayed fairly flat over a bulk of the last six months up until mid-May. Then it got eliminated from the playoffs and nosedived along with the rest of the card market. So it was staying decently up there. Uh, and then they got bounced and whoop, straight on down. And you can see I also pulled his hoops and his select. They basically follow the same pattern, just not as severe. Coming down here, looking at percentages. Giannis Base Prism PSA 10 is down to 1000 bucks, down from 1600 It's a 37% drop. Hoops is down 15%, and his select is down 26%. I will say interest is still high in Giannis. He was, on the NBA side of things, a player that a lot of people were asking about at the Midwest Monster. Uh, I have a Giannis BGS 9.5 True Gem. I'm sorry, Min Gem Plus, not a True Gem Plus. Uh, and I had a lot of people ask about that at trade night and stuff. It's not a card that I'm really looking to move. I'm into it for super cheap. Uh, and I just kind of like the idea of having a Giannis rookie laying around. He is an interesting offseason buy if they get super low, especially his more rare stuff. This is just looking at base stuff. His Prism Silver uh, is actually still selling for over 20-some thousand, I believe, in a PSA 10. Uh, over the last six months, I believe that card's actually still in the green. Uh, but his base stuff has taken a beating. Speaking of taking a beating, Kevin Durant. Tops Chrome base and I pulled the refractor this green one that's literally a cliff that's his PSA 10 refractor Whew. hide the women and children folks PSA 10 refractor was up to $18,000 and it was actually a lot higher than that at one point in time but just a few months ago that was back in April that was an $18,000 card it is now a $7,700 card up 57% drop, $10,000 decrease from April to June. That's two and a half months. It dropped 10K. Ouch. In general, KD market has been a bloodbath. Top Chrome PSA 10 down 53%, PSA 9 50%, and a refractor PSA 9 down 52%. Narrative Street is going against KD. Yeah, he's one of the best modern players that there is, but everybody loves the hate on KD. The media, NBA Twitter, uh, a large portion of the card market. He definitely has his fans, don't get me wrong, but they hold the Warriors championships against him. They hold leading OKC against him. Uh, you know, the whole bus driver narrative stuff from Barkley, the whole nine yards. He has basically everything going against them. I could see him continuing to get cheaper just as a general decline in cards, period. And also, he has Narrative Street going against them. Maybe something shakes up here. There's rumors, uh, you know, as of yesterday that Kyrie Irving wants out. And like I said, I am recording this. I should mark this uh, Tuesday evening, just in case something crazy happens with a trade or something like that, because we are in that time of year. Uh, but Kyrie Irving is basically saying that he wants out or is going to explore options. We'll see what happens with that. So maybe the Nets get a shakeup. Hell, maybe KD gets traded. I know Bill Simmons has been talking about that one for a hot minute. I don't see it happening, but who knows? Uh, that It'll juice his prices, but yikes, 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 yikes. He is probably taking the hardest hit out of anybody, to be honest. Steph Curry, PSA 10. This one's interesting. Uh, you go back six months, his PSA 10 was selling for 13K. Guy just won an NBA championship. It's going for 10K. 21% drop, and it, it has rebounded. You can see it actually dipped. So if I blew this out farther, Steph Curry was really cheap in the offseason. Air quotes, really cheap. Spiked way up at the beginning of the season because he played out of his mind. Played eh, the second half of the season. It dipped back down again, and then obviously the playoff run lifted it back up again. It's just interesting that if you bought in that early part of the season, you're actually still underwater on that card, even though he just won an NBA title. I am very curious to see what the next one sells at. Does it sell higher or does it dip back down? The nine's actually already starting to dip a little bit. So very curious what that one does. Next, Tatum Silver. Over the last six months, you're only down 14%, $150 drop. Uh, but as we can see, it's been a wild ride across there. In the early part of the season, he was slightly trending up overall. Obviously, he had a pretty big spike during the end of the season and during the playoffs, and then really pulled back. This got up to touched 2K for a hot minute, 
but high thousands, 18, 17, 1600, and now is back down to under 1K again. Uh, last sale at 976, and you can actually see some lower. Here's an 856. I saw one listed on my slabs the other day for 825 that someone bought. So Tatum really depends on when you bought. Really depends on when you bought, just like most things. Uh, but his stuff is getting beat up pretty good. Once again, Narrative Street really against him right now. He's still only 24 years old. Don't forget that, people. Uh, if you could get Tatum deals, uh, he is a player that's always on my radar if I could slide into something super, super cheap. The problem is, is I don't know what super, super cheap is anymore. You know what I mean? We I don't know where the bottom is on a lot of this stuff. So just be patient. Be careful. You know, pick your spots. Go for cool stuff. Up next, Donovan Mitchell over the last six months down 43% from 700 bucks down to 400 bucks. Another one that is tied up in a lot of trade rumors. The Jazz in general tied up in a lot of trade rumors. They could be a team that shakes a lot of things up. I do not expect them to trade Donovan Mitchell. Uh, maybe they do, but I, I just don't see it happening. I think they trade Gobert before Mitchell, but I could be wrong. Could maybe see a spike if they pulled something crazy and brought someone in good to run next to him. I don't see it. I think they keep him for most of this season. Uh, they probably fail, and then they move him at the trade deadline this year at the worst case next offseason. Now, depending on where he goes, he could get a little bit of an interesting boost in price, but there's too much ugly between now and then. Yeah, you can get cute, try to tie the market, all that jazz, but Mitchell stuff continues to take a pounding and is actually continuing to dip down as you see the last couple sales there. Next up, John Morant, Silver Prism. Another wild ride. Uh, back around Christmas time, this was going for $1,300. At one point in time, this got up over 2000 at multiple sales and is now down to 1000 even. I saw some of these as Midwest Monster, I think, for 1100 bucks in cases, right around 1000 bucks in cases. That's down 30%. That's from the starting point. But obviously, you know, if you bought in here, you could be down upwards as much as 50% on Morant. His stuff was going gangbusters, and then he got hurt against the Warriors uh, and then tailed off from there. They're another interesting team to watch at the NBA draft and in the offseason. They have a lot of picks, and they have a lot of players. They could potentially look to consolidate a couple guys into one, you know, mid-tier star player, uh, depending on what's out there. Maybe that gives him a little bit of a bounce or just improves his outlook for the upcoming season. Zion. Shockingly enough, Zion is one of the players of the big names that we're looking at here that has held value the best. I'm honestly not surprised by this. Uh, he's only down 17% from 1700 to 1400 so if you loaded up at Zion at Christmas time, you are outperforming most other people. Why, you might ask? His prices had already corrected, and now he hasn't been playing. So nothing good or bad can happen. It's all the hopes, dreams, and wishes uh, that people are touting on him to hopefully bail out their bad investments. I think I mentioned it in the Midwest Monster recap. You don't see a lot of Zion in cases. People are not putting him out. That actually helps keep prices up because there's just not inventory being brought to market. People are holding that stuff back. And we all know there's a lot of Zion inventory out there. I could see Zion people trying to get sneaky with him at or around the national and then trying to dump it all before the season actually starts. I'll be curious to see if he gets a run up or not. They, the Pelicans, are also heavily rumored in a lot of deals, maybe for DeAndre Ayton or who knows what else but they could potentially shake things up and that could be what boosts Zion's prices or in this market, just keep them flat. And honestly, just staying flat is kind of a win right now. Next up, Trey Young, another ugly one. Uh, Trey Young got absolutely hammered this year. His silver prism started around Christmas time at 1100 bucks down to 550, a 52% drop on his PSA 10. Yikes. Uh, they are another team. Once again, a lot of extra guys rumored to make a lot of potential moves. John Collins could be on the move. Herder. Uh, they got a few other little pieces and parts there. I've heard their name linked to a lot of different stuff across the different NBA podcasts that I listen to. Maybe they consolidate down, pick up one really nice player, 
maybe a high draft pick to bring in someone younger to to run with Trey Young. I don't know, but I definitely think they make some sort of move. Whether it moves the Trey Young market, I don't know. Trey Young, very exciting player, exposed obviously for his defense, and that Hawks team drastically underperformed last year. Uh, could be an interesting buy low. I know I'm sitting on a lot of Trey uh, that I'll probably at least hold through the national towards the start of the season and see what happens. Luca, PSA 10 Silver Prism. Was thirty three hundred bucks at Christmas time. Now currently two thousand, just under two thousand nineteen hundred. Actually, forty two percent drop. Uh, held. I don't want to say steady, but slowly trended down during the season. Got a little bit of a spike during the uh, playoffs there, and then really corrected after he got eliminated. They just traded for Christian Wood. There's rumors they're in the Kyrie market. I don't know if I believe that or not. Something will happen with Jalen Brunson. They're either going to keep him or sign and trade him, most likely. So maybe there's a little bit of a news there uh, to juice Luka a little bit or to get some hype behind him to start the season. He took that team to the Western Conference Finals with really nobody. Luka is so freaking good. Uh, I understand, you know, people like to hate on him or whatever, but he's an amazing basketball player. The fact that he drug that Mavericks team to the Western Conference Finals says a lot with no real running mate. No offense to Jalen Brunson, but he's not a Robin to Lucas Batman. Christian Wood is actually a pretty nice pickup. I don't think he's a Robin either, uh, but I do like him as a general NBA player. We'll see what he can do on an actually good team uh, and not on the Rockets. Next up, two more to look at. LaMelo Ball Base Prism, or Silver Prism rather. PSA 10 uh, has really corrected as well. This in a PSA 10 was $3,000 down to 980 actually trumps KD percentage-wise for a drop. 70, 65% drop um, to $1,900 in value on his PSA 10 silver. Uh, I think LaMelo is drastically overrated. I've never been a big LaMelo guy at all. I wasn't an Ant-Man guy either, to be fair, but I did like Ant-Man more than Melo. Uh, but I, I just, I don't see LaMelo ever being the best team on an NBA championship team. I think this card has more to go down. I don't think the Hornets are going to be very good next year. Uh, there's already rumors swirling that they don't want to keep Miles Bridges because he might cost too much money. Good luck with that. Uh, he's pretty good. If, if they want to sign and trade him, and I'm a Cavs fan, I'm waiting in open arms for Miles Bridges. Yes, please. But generally speaking, I actually I, I would not want a Lamelo card at all. To be honest, I just he's a fine NBA player. He's a good real life NBA player. I don't think he's ever the best player on a team. I don't. He doesn't score enough to be like the super flashy guy. I, I just don't see how his cards gain a ton of value. Last but not least, Ant-Man. Same thing here, down 35%. 400 bucks. This is a silver prism as well. 1200 bucks to just under 800. He was trending down pretty good. Obviously got a nice little spike from his playoff performance there and then went right back down and corrected again. He actually impressed me the most uh, of that rookie class last year. Seeing him, uh, of the 2019 guys that is, or the 2020 guys that is, seeing him in the playoffs really take it to the next level, I was really impressed by him. I was not impressed by him coming into the league, but towards the end of the season and that playoff run, uh, I really enjoyed him as a player. Well, he's a fun guy to listen to on interviews, uh, but he was really fun to watch play during the NBA playoffs. We'll see what Minnesota wants to do, if anything. Uh, I just don't know how that team's ever a deep playoff contender with D'Angelo Russell as the point guard. We'll see. Cat uh, obviously showed some serious maturity issues in the NBA playoffs. We'll see if he can get things on straight. He's been in the league for a while now. He should start to figure things out. But I really like what I saw out of Edwards. I really, really did. Uh, he's just a fun player. I don't know if he's going to hold value or not. That's a whole different bag of cats. But from a funness factor, a hype factor... He definitely has that side of it and the it factor as well. Uh, just because he's a hilarious dude. He's a fan favorite. People really like him. Uh, but we'll see what happens. He's stuck in the Great White North. So that does it for chart and graph time. Uh, like I said, NBA market, definitely a ugly, ugly mess. But to be fair, I could probably look at most other card markets. Baseball for sure uh, has been tanking pretty hard. Football, outside of a couple guys, has been trending down uh, or just barely holding on to, to very small losses. So generally speaking, it's pretty rough out there regardless of sport. 
I, these charts and graphs, I think, would look similar to this. If, if say, the, the general economy, the general state of the world wasn't a mess, I still feel like trend-wise this would be the same, just the drops wouldn't be as big. It's that time of year for this stuff. The interesting part does is does it bounce back in the offseason heading into the next season? That's the part nobody knows. I don't know. You don't know. We're all just guessing. It's just so hard to tell right now because of just the general state of the world as we've talked about. So that's all I have for you guys and girls today. Like, comment, subscribe, any questions, whatever, leave them down below. Catch you guys and girls on the next one. Peace.